Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. It's another Fragrance Friday and I am so excited because in today's video, I will be sharing my absolute favorite Chanel fragrances for women. And I'm riding a bit of a shopping high right now because I just placed my order for the Chanel Holiday Makeup Collection. I know many of us have been waiting with bated breath. When will it be here? When is it going to arrive? Well, finally, it is available on Chanel.com. So I will link all of the pieces that I picked up down below in case you're curious, but you can expect a a full review of the Chanel Holiday Makeup Collection coming to my channel sometime very soon. Fingers crossed, maybe over the weekend, I use the code in the bag, all caps for free overnight shipping. It still works, so I keep using it. By tomorrow, it's going to be like Christmas come early in my household and I cannot wait. If you're new here, welcome. I am so happy to have you. This is our pink, sparkly, positivity-filled bubble on YouTube where we talk about our love of luxury, beauty, fragrance, and so much more. So if that sounds like something that interests you, go ahead and subscribe right now and hit the notification bell so you don't miss another thing. And let's go ahead and dive right in. Getting back to Chanel fragrances, this is a video that I've wanted to create for such a long time because there are so many options. It can be difficult to navigate the Chanel fragrance world, if you will. Even now there are some of the classic old fragrances that aren't as popular that are starting to be pulled from department stores and have gone into limited distribution. So Cristal, Cristal Auvergne, number 19. They're classics, they've been around for a long time and they're very hard to find nowadays. So I figured by creating this list, I could narrow it down so that this represents, in my opinion, the best of the brand. If you've watched any of my fragrance videos and you're familiar with my personal preferences, you know this fragrance is on the list, so I might as well get it over with right off the top. I absolutely love Gardenia. In my opinion, this is a perfect fragrance year round, especially during fall winter. It's soft and floral. I have the Parfum interpretation, so I just sort of dab it on in you know, pressure points, specific places, so it's still very light. Although this is also available in an Eau de Parfum if you prefer a larger spray that you can be maybe a little bit more generous with. The Gardenia fragrance has got to be the best exclusive fragrance in my personal opinion. If you love soft white floral fragrances, you will love Gardenia. It's simple and elegant at the same time. I am incredibly biased because I wore this for my wedding day, but I think it is a beautiful bridal fragrance, a special occasion fragrance. It is so floral and yet there's a creaminess to it. It is so soft, so feminine and beautiful. One of my favorite fragrances of all time, not just favorite Chanel fragrances, but truly if I had to choose one floral fragrance to wear for the rest of my life, it would be Gardenia. Second on the list also happens to be my second favorite exclusive fragrance and that is Beige. Unfortunately, I have not added this to my personal collection just yet, but I'm sure I will sometime very soon and no best of Chanel fragrance list would be complete without Beige. It is just such a standout fragrance among all of the Chanel fragrance collections. Beige is one of the color codes for the House of Chanel and it represents nature and simplicity. Coco Chanel loved beige, so it makes perfect sense there, that there is a fragrance by this name. It contains a bouquet of hawthorn, freesia, frangipani, and hints of honey, and it is intended to be a breath of beige. So if a color could be a fragrance or if a fragrance could be represented in a color, this would be it. And Honestly, I think of all of the conversations that I've had with people about the exclusive collection, beige is probably the number one fragrance that always gets brought up. I know it is a crowd pleaser. It is one of the most popular because it's just a fun fragrance to wear. It's bright and beautiful. I'm very torn. I'm sort of going back and forth between beige and Allure Sensuelle, which is the next fragrance on the list, between which one is going to be the next Chanel fragrance that I add to my collection because both are so beautiful and it truly is a crime that a Chanel lover and fragrance enthusiast like myself does not have these as part of her collection. But the third fragrance, Allure Sensuelle, is remarkable. If you have ever smelled Allure, I always kind of consider this fragrance to be one of the dark horses because you kind of have to know about it or be introduced to it to appreciate it. The bottle is relatively 
simple and not something that really just is going to jump out at you. And yet the fragrance itself is so stunning. So I've always really loved the original Allure, but in my first Chanel training back in Nashville, I had the opportunity to smell all of the exclusive fragrances, including Allure Sensuelle, which is available on Chanel.com and in the boutiques. And oh my goodness, I remember it created such an impact. I remember walking away from the training thinking that is the best fragrance that I have ever smelled. It is so beautiful and sexy and delicious. And what is that fragrance? I just need to have it. And it's something that is, again, very popular among people who kind of know about it, but you have to kind of go out of your way to seek this fragrance. You're not going to stumble upon it in a department store. Just listen to these notes and try to imagine this fragrance. Rose, frankincense, amber patchouli, bourbon vanilla, and pink pepper. It could be a great sexy date night, fall winter fragrance. Allure Sensuelle should be top of your list. Number four on my list is Paris Finisse. And you can see by how much is in the bottle that this is not a fragrance that I spray or wear as often, but it is so beautiful, it absolutely belongs here. I wanted to include one of the Lazo fragrances and Paris Finisse is hands down my favorite. This entire collection was inspired by water destinations that were really important and meaningful for Gabrielle Chanel. Venice happened to be her very first trip outside of France and she was forever changed and so inspired by the architecture and the lions. To this day, you see all of these motifs within Chanel jewelry and the Chanel fashion collections that all go back and tie back to her very first trip to Venice. It's a warm, soft oriental. It has neroli, vanilla, tonka bean, but it is an eau de toilette interpretation. So it's going to be a little bit softer. I think for anybody who likes a more personal fragrance, this would be beautiful for daytime. This could be your everyday fragrance for a first date. I think it would be really beautiful. There's something that is still incredibly romantic. Even though it is light and soft, there's a sensuality to it as well, probably because of the tonka bean and the vanilla. It's slightly powdery right off the top, so that may be a bit of a turnoff, but most people that I show this fragrance to, most people that I've heard from, absolutely love the Paris Venice. I honestly think it would be considered a crime and the fragrance police would come running to create a best Chanel fragrance list and not include Chanel number no. five. But for me, the best interpretation, something that I would personally wear, is the number no. five low. I think this is the most modern interpretation that they could possibly come up with. And they really didn't have to tweak it that much. They kept most of the notes, but then they added cedar and some wood. It was the first time that they ever changed the note composition of number five to create low. And whatever magic they put in this bottle, I think they really hit it out of the park. It's so light and airy and just, mm so fresh. I think this is a beautiful, elegant fragrance. It absolutely belongs on the, this list. I could not create this list without including some form of number five. I think this is definitely the most modern interpretation, beautiful as a daytime fragrance and really something special. Number five might be the queen of all Chanel fragrances, but Coco Mademoiselle is homecoming queen year after year. I think this is probably becoming the modern number five. I mean, not a lot of people will come to the counter and ask for Chanel number five anymore. They just don't. And I always was surprised in the past by how popular number five still was. And in recent times, I've noticed that those numbers are really dwindling, but what has never stopped and what has always been one of the most popular is Coco Mademoiselle. This is just a crowd pleaser, beloved by all. I don't think I have ever had somebody tell me that they don't like this fragrance. They may say that they don't like to wear it because it's too popular and everybody wears it, so I'm not going to. If you like something a little bit softer, you could go with the Eau de Toilette. Of course, the original Eau de Parfum is perfection in a bottle, but the new Coco Mademoiselle Intense is for those people who just really love a bold, sensual fragrance and you want to be smelled the moment you walk into the room. So 
Coco Mademoiselle is for all ages, but also all personality types as well. Next on my list of favorites is the brand new Gabrielle Essence. Here I have the original Gabrielle Eau de Parfum, and the brand new Essence is still an Eau de Parfum, but what sets it apart and makes it different from the original is that they heightened the tuberose and the jasmine. So while it is still a soft floral fragrance, it's a little bit creamier, a little bit more sensual and bold. It is such a stunning fragrance. I personally really liked it, but I heard from a lot of people who were very underwhelmed by this fragrance when it first launched last year, or was it the year before? So to those people, I would say revisit Gabrielle, but try the essence. It may really surprise you because I don't think it was the notes of the fragrance that turned people off by Gabrielle. From what I heard, there were people that didn't think it lasted very long or they just weren't really wowed or surprised. They didn't think it was anything special that really stood out. But the new Gabrielle Essence does capture something special. There is a little bit of a vibrancy that you don't get from the original. I have two more fragrances on the list and unfortunately I don't have a bottle of this next fragrance to show you, but it is one that is incredibly nostalgic to me. I've gone through several bottles in my lifetime and as I was putting this list together, I almost didn't include it because it's not one that I've reached for often or reached for lately. But last night I smelled this fragrance again for the first time in a while and it just sort of reawakened that original love that I had. And that is the original Chance fragrance. I grew up absolutely loving this fragrance. And I know I sometimes talk about personal stories when it comes to fragrance and it's really just me sharing my personal bias because that is what fragrance does. It reminds you of a specific time in your life or a specific person, perhaps a specific occasion. So I'm sure many of you have your own stories that tie back to a specific Chanel fragrance. And if you do, I really sincerely hope that you will share them down below because I love reading your stories as well. But Chance was a fragrance that I loved as a teenager and I remember working after school, I taught cheerleading lessons with my friend and we would save up cash. And I finally saved up enough money to purchase my first bottle of Chanel Chance. And it was my very first Chanel purchase ever. And I remember going to the counter and feeling so mature because here I had a lot of cash that I was paying for my own fragrance because I knew there was no way that my mom or my parents would buy this for me. It was too expensive. And I felt like Chance was the scent of a mature, beautiful woman and I wanted to smell like that so bad. The little square cap on the bottles of Chanel Chance represent a dice because Chanel believed in rolling the dice and taking chances in life and just sort of making goals for yourself and going for it. It's not new, so I think it's maybe lost a little bit of that sparkle, but every time I smell this fragrance, I kind of, fall in love over and over again. My last favorite Chanel fragrance for women is Coco Noir. And if you watch a lot of my fragrance videos, you know how much I love this. I would consider this one of the best sexy date night fragrances, one of the best fall winter fragrances. It leans more evening, so this is not something that I grab on a daily basis, but it is incredibly sexy and seductive and yet very elegant at the same time. It is really one of the most interesting fragrances I think from Chanel. It's a deep woody oriental, it's spicy. I think it has a bit of a masculine appeal. This is the very first Christmas gift that my husband ever bought for me. Mm. It never fails, it is so good. Vanilla, tonka bean, patchouli. I know so many women who love this fragrance. And of course, the black bottle is so classic, so sleek and chic. I absolutely love having this on my vanity. If you have not tried this fragrance, I cannot recommend it enough. I think it is the perfect addition to any Chanel fragrance collection. And that completes today's list of my favorite Chanel fragrances for women. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me any of your comments, your questions down below. I wanna hear from you guys what is your favorite Chanel fragrance? Drop me a comment so we can keep the conversation going there. As always, I will be linking all of the fragrances, everything that I use today on my face, down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.